Okay, so we're just going to quickly look at the calculator assignment, and then we're going to go on and learn uh, one error handling technique called exception handling. So here's my calculator, and I'll fire it up and run it for you. So I can do, say, 34.123 and 7. I can add them. And notice the label changes, and I get my result here. Subtract, multiply, all of them work with interdivi integer division, is what this backward slash is. Notice I have uh, no decimals here, and modulo is the remainder when divided. Okay, so let's just have a look at the code and quickly have a, a look, see how that was done. Most of the button click handlers are pretty much the same uh, except for the difference of the operation that we're doing. So the first thing I do is declare a, a local variable uh, to hold the result and in most cases I'm making it a double. I change the operation label to specify what operation I'm doing and then I calculate my result and in doing so I do explicit conversion. I'm using those convert to double functions. So I'm converting, I'm, the text boxes contain the user input as text in a text field. So I have to convert uh, from the text to double. And I'm using these conversion routines uh, that we looked at in class, convert to double, to do an explicit conversion. It's safer and better just to do explicit conversion. It also conveys what your intention is as a programmer. Um, okay, and then here I do uh, an explicit conversion back to uh, text type, but and, and I left this here just to show you that as one possible way to do it. I prefer to use the two-string method, which I've done in all of the others. So. ToString is a, a method that belongs to the double type. And by using the ToString method, I have the opportunity to also do some formatting. So I can specify I want a, um, a number with only two places behind the decimal point. Okay, and you can see lengthwise my um, subtraction is done the same. Multiplication is done the same. Uh, now, here's a difference, and this is a, one of the reasons why I like to use two-string. If the numbers get very big when you do the power operator, um, you can't display it in a, as a regular integer, so it won't, it won't fit. You won't get the correct number. Um, but if I display it with this uh, E format, that's going to give me scientific notation. Actually, I only want three places after the decimal. Uh, so it can display very large numbers, which I'll show you in a sec. And then the other one that's different is for both the integer division and the modulo. I make my, my local variable an integer because I only want to work with integers. And uh, because I know I'm working with integers, with the two string, I specify n0 so I have nothing after the decimal place. I don't want to show decimal places. And then the last two things to look at, my clear button clears my uh, two text boxes. It sets my result string to be empty. So my result label string is empty. And it also sets my operation uh, text property to be empty. And then puts the focus on the first text box. So no matter where you are, when you click the clear button, the focus goes back to a, a reasonable place. And the exit button just uh, does me.close, which we've seen several times. Uh, okay, so let me run this one more time, and we'll talk a bit about what's going on now that we've seen the code. So again, if I, uh, if I type in 34 points, some decimals, and um, 33 points here, 
<clears throat> so I get that nice display with only two decimal places. That's how I formatted it. Now notice because I am only showing two decimal places, I'm only getting two decimal places of accuracy. And these things are only one apart uh, to two decimal places. So if I want to see more accuracy, I have to display more decimal places. Um, but, but that's okay. Multiplication, and here's one. Um, if we didn't use this scientific notation, that's uh, 9 and some change times 10 to the power 50. It would take 50 columns to display this, which I don't have room for in my result field, so it would be nonsense. But with the scientific notation, I'm able to display large numbers here. And I'm able to do that because I'm using the two string uh, rather than just the conversion, uh, the intrinsic conversion function. And the integer division, I have an uh, integer result because I am using the, well, I'm using an integer local variable to do my arithmetic, but I'm also using the two string with the uh, format to not print any decimal places. Okay, so now that's that's the homework. Now, what happens though if, say, I type in uh, my user types in one and two, and then I try and do uh, say addition? Okay, it it crashes because. And I'll go ahead and hit, notice how it, it lights up the, the spot that it had trouble with. And it gives me a message here saying it's an unhandled exception. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to convert some text that's not just digits. There's letters in there to a double, and that can't, that can't be done. There's no way to do it. So what happens is Visual Basic throws up its hands and gives up and generates what's called an exception. And that exception causes the application to crash. So there is, this is the next thing that we're going to learn, and it's the, the next section in your textbook, <clears throat> starting on page 160, called Exception Handling. And the way we handle exceptions, if there's an operation that I know might cause an exception, um, and this is a very good example here, I'm trying to convert some text into doubles, into numbers, and I know that's not always going to work. The user can uh, enter some stuff that's not valid to convert. So I, I do what's called a try-catch block. I wrap this stuff up in a try and a catch. So um, what I do is I isolate this thing that could cause me problems, and I do that, I wrap it up in what's called a try-catch block. So if I just hit uh, try, Type in try, and now I'll let IntelliSense fill in the rest. I'll get this all set up, and now I'll talk about it. So what's going to happen is, what's in my try section, so between the try and the catch, I'm going to try and do it. And then in the catch, if whatever I'm trying to do, if, if what's in my try block there causes raises an exception, so if something I do there, or the, the user does, causes an exception, which it does. We saw the error was an unhandled exception. Well, this is how I handle it. I catch the exception. An exception is actually an object. So here I'm, I'm catching ex as exception, and then I can do something with it. So in my case, I don't, I don't want to do anything. I just want to uh, gracefully um, handle it and go back to getting more input from the user. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a message box and I'm just going to give a message to please enter a valid number. Alright, so I'm going to try and do this conversion thing uh, which is the place that something could go wrong and if it goes right it just skips over the catch and carries on just absolutely as normal. But if something goes wrong, and if that bit of code in my try block throws an exception, 
my catch block, I have the opportunity to catch the exception and, and handle it, do something with it. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to pop up this message block. Okay, so what if I now, if I do one and two, and I try and add them together, okay, look, instead of uh, raising, it's instead of crashing, I get this message block pop up, message box pop up, and it says, please enter a valid number. And I'll say, okay. Um, so now I'm back. None of my fields are cleared. What I would like to do is essentially hit the clear button when that happens. Okay. So, and I'll show you. If I do subtraction, I still get that exception. Now we kind of know more what an exception is, and we can read this. You can see an unhandled exception of type system invalid cast has occurred. Remember, a uh, cast is when I, it's another word for converting from one type to another. You're cast in one type as another. So I'm trying to cast a string as a double, or convert a string to a double, but it's, it's not working because it's, it's not a valid string to be converted to a double. Um, okay, so I, I could do something like try and um, have that uh, generate a, a click event on that clear text button, but this is a good chance to uh, look at creating our own subroutines. So we, we're, we've been creating these subroutines that are specifically click handlers, and we either double click on a, a control in the design view, or we use these drop down boxes to specify what event we want to handle. But I can also just create subroutines that I use myself. So what I'm going to do is create a subroutine that's going to contain all the stuff I do during the click event, um, during the click event on the clear button, and then I'm just going to call that subroutine whenever I need it. So I'm going to call it private uh, private sub. And I'll just say clear it all. Clear it all will be the name of my you know, function, and it is a function, so I have to have this uh, open and close parenthesis. Okay, and then I'm going to take, here's my click button right here. So I am going to take all of this stuff and paste it into my new server team, clear it all. And I can, I'm going to get rid of it here. And instead, I'm just going to call that subroutine clear it all. Okay, so I am going to I've created this subroutine called clear it all that just does exactly what I did in my click handler for the clear button before. Uh, I clear my two text boxes, I set my text labels to be, I set the text property on my two labels to be empty, and then I move the focus to my first clear box. So now, because I, this is a good example of one of the times when it, it's, subroutines are really valuable. Instead of writing the same code over and over again, this is exactly what I want to do in my catch. Okay, so now, if I have an exception in my try block, I'm going to catch it. I'm going to do this message block saying, uh, pardon me, message box saying, please enter a valid number. And then I'm going to clear my form with my new server team to clear my form. Okay, and just uh, before I do anything, I'm going to verify that this is going to work. So when I click on clear, my clear handle, handler calls that subroutine and clears the form. Okay, so if I do one and two and I try and add them, my message box comes up, says enter valid numbers, and when I click OK, it clears the form and puts the focus where I want it. Okay, that's awesome. 
So I'm I'm still generating, I'm still the user's still putting in invalid data. It still causes an exception. The only difference is now I'm catching that exception and I'm handling it. So I'm going to uh, clear the form. I'm going to tell the user they have to uh, use a, uh, a valid number. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go back and wait for the next event. Okay. And there it is. Now my only problem is I've only done that so far for addition. So I need to go and do that for all of the others. Okay, and that is it for um, exception handling.